Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Weekly. Well, this week, we officially turn the celestial calendar from winter to spring here in the Northern Hemisphere with the equinox occurring on Saturday. So what exactly is an equinox? What might you see and what changes are in store? So let's dive right in. We're going to begin looking west tonight right at sunset, and we can see the sun setting just a little bit south of west. But if we jump ahead to Saturday's sunset, the day of the equinox, we can see it setting directly west. So that's where the sun will set on the equinox. But what exactly do we mean by equinox? Well, we talked in June and December about the solstices and how that's the time when Earth's North Pole tilts toward or away from the sun. On the December solstice, the North Pole tilts away, and on the June solstice, the North Pole tilts towards the sun. It might seem like the North Pole flip-flops back and forth, but it doesn't. It's still pointed at the same spot in the sky, roughly at the star Polaris. What does change is where Earth is around the sun. The Earth's orbit around the sun changes what constellations are visible in the night sky, and the fact that the Earth's axis is tilted causes the seasons. But there's a point in between the solstices when Earth's axis isn't tilted toward or away from the sun, it's in between. These are the equinoxes, one that starts the spring and one that ushers in the fall. The word equinox means equal night, which refers to the fact that the length of the day and the night are roughly equal at this time of the year for a lot of the planet. But where you are on Earth has a big effect on how you experience the equinox. From the equator on the spring equinox, the sun will appear directly overhead at local noon. From the South Pole, this is the last glimpse of the sun until September. In the Southern Hemisphere, this is the end of summer, and the days are getting shorter and shorter. But the days are lengthening in the Northern Hemisphere. At the North Pole, the sun rises on the 20th for the first time since September. And in mid-Northern latitudes from now until late September, the days will be longer than the nights. So that's great for barbecues and evening activities, but it does make the waiting time for stargazing quite a bit longer. In December, you could go outside at 6 o'clock here in Chicago and see some stars. Come June, you'll be waiting until 8.30 just for the sun to set. I'm not complaining, though. These warm spring and summer nights are short, but they're perfect for stargazing. Well, the time of the equinox might also provide you with a sky-watching opportunity that doesn't come around every day. At the summer solstice, the sun sets north of west, and on the winter solstice, it sets south of west. And on the equinoxes, as we saw, it will set directly west. This change was well known to ancient peoples, and alignments of places like Newgrange in Ireland, Chichen Itza in Mexico, and Stonehenge in England show an understanding of this phenomenon and an attempt to mark the passage of time. While you may not have to travel all that far to see another solar alignment, this one a bit more by chance. The city streets of Chicago and a lot of other cities are aligned roughly to the cardinal points. And the time of the equinox gives us a chance to see the sun rise and set directly between the buildings. This phenomenon, unofficially called Chicago Henge, is a sight to behold. It's a photographer's dream and also a chance to connect to your city and the sky at the same time. Here in Chicago, your best bet is to check the weather and pick the clearest sunset opportunity, or sunrise if you're up for it, in the days around Saturday's equinox, and go take a look. As long as the sky is clear enough to see the sun near sunset or sunrise, you should get a remarkable view down an east-west street. The skies weren't completely clear when I took this picture back in September, but it gives you a pretty good idea of what you can expect to spot. Now, if your city doesn't have an east-west alignment, there might be other dates to look for this phenomenon. Places like Manhattan are more closely aligned with the solstices, and there it's called Manhattan Henge. In the description below, we've linked to a post about Chicago Henge on Adler's website. And to learn even more about the equinox and Chicago Henge, check out Adler's Sky Observer's Hangout from March 8th, right here on our YouTube channel. Well, the equinox isn't the only thing happening this week. Looking to the southwest sky in the evening this week shows an interesting dance of objects. We've been following the planet Mars on its path around the sky the past few weeks, 
It's been winding its way between the Pleiades and the Hyades star clusters. Tomorrow night, March 18th, the moon joins the show, and you'll see an interesting parallelogram in the sky formed by the moon, the Pleiades star cluster, the planet Mars, and the star Aldebaran, which marks the eye of Taurus, the bull. The next night, on the 19th, the moon will have moved closer to Mars in our sky. It's only three degrees away, making for a great view through binoculars. Two nights later, on the 21st, will be the first quarter moon. So throughout the week, look for the moon's phase and position to change from one night to the next. As always, the first quarter moon and the nights surrounding it are a fantastic phase for small telescopes. All along the shadow line, there are craters and mountains to see, and the features that are visible and are highlighted each night change as the moon gets fuller and fuller. Now, you don't need a fancy telescope to really begin to get a very good view, so I encourage you, even if you just have your eyes to get outside and see that beautiful view of the moon, but if you have access to binoculars or a small telescope, definitely get out there this week and check it out. Well, that's what I have for you this week. Thanks, as always, for watching. Adler's YouTube channel has lots of great content and more coming out all the time, so make sure to subscribe and stay up to date. And of course, follow us on social media. Happy spring, and we'll see you next time.